What's up guys, my name's Brandon and 2022 is set to be a record breaking year when it comes to Apple product launches and the first set of products are almost here. So according to Mark Gurman at Bloomberg, three new products could be coming at this spring event, which is scheduled for March 8th barring any setbacks. And just like the past several events, this will be a digital presentation, which I personally like much better than the in-person events since Apple cinematography and just their whole presentation style is top notch. So as you can see from the phone I'm holding right here, the first product coming at this event is going to be the iPhone SE 3. So the iPhone SE 2, the second generation, debuted in April of 2020 for $399, and it looked identical to the iPhone 8, while adding an A13 Bionic chip to make it, of course, a more reasonable budget option at the time. Now, for the third generation, Apple plans to do pretty much the same thing. So we can expect the design to stay nearly identical to the iPhone SE 2 with the potential of a physical camera upgrade, maybe like a bigger camera sensor to allow more light in or something like that. And then inside, we'll likely get a more powerful A15 Bionic chip, which is the same chip found in the iPhone 13 and 13 Pro. And this is also going to help power that upgraded camera and improve the post image processing as well. And along with that, we'll also be getting 5G connectivity. So we'll now have 5G on the new iPhone SE to kind of make it a little bit more future proof, but we're not going to be seeing MagSafe technology on the back. So we're still gonna have a glass back like we did on the iPhone SE 2, but according to Mako Takara, we're not gonna have MagSafe, which is kind of disappointing, especially if we're getting 5G in the A15 Bionic. I feel like Apple just can't give us everything, obviously for the cheap price tag of the iPhone SE, but still, I would have liked to see MagSafe added to this device. And speaking of that price, I would expect a minor bump this year over the 399 that we saw with the previous generation, but I don't think it's gonna cost too much more. Maybe like 449 is my guess, and I would imagine that the 64 gigabyte option will be replaced with 128 being the base model. At least I hope so. And if all of this is true, the iPhone SE 3 is going to be a hot seller, especially for those who still prefer Touch ID over Face ID, because of course, we're gonna have the home button. This will be the only phone with the home button currently on sale. Along with the iPhone SE, Apple is also planning to unveil a new iPad Air. And based on the rumors, this might as well be called the iPad Air SE because it's expected to have the exact same upgrades as the iPhone SE 3, a new chip, a better camera, and 5G. Now, just like with the SE, I would expect the fifth generation iPad Air to come with the A15 Bionic chip inside, but there is also the possibility of seeing the A12Z chip that we saw in the 2020 iPad Pro. That would be nice if we saw that. In addition to this, we'll also be seeing a major camera upgrade, and that's because center stage is finally coming to the iPad Air. So we'll have that 12 megapixel ultra wide camera, and that of course is how we're going to be able to use center stage along with quad LED true tone flash for the rear facing camera. And for the cellular models, we will see 5G added like I mentioned earlier, and that's likely going to bump up the price a tiny bit. So the fourth gen iPad Air, the cellular model started at 729 and the non-cellular started at 599. But again, that was for 64 gigabytes. But just like with the SE, I'm guessing and really just praying that they do away with the 64 gigabyte storage capacity and replace it with 128. And then the final new product that we could be seeing at this event is a new redesigned Mac Mini. So the Mac Mini got the M1 treatment back in late 2020, but unlike the MacBooks, we have not seen an upgrade since then. Now, I personally replaced my maxed out Mac Mini for the M1 Max MacBook Pro, the 14 inch, and I have not looked back since. I love the new M1 Max chip. They are crazy powerful, but I would be willing to switch back to the Mini if I see a huge upgrade over the M1, like we saw with the M1 Pro and M1 Max chips in the latest MacBook Pros. So I would imagine that we will see those same M1 Pro and M1 Max chips inside of the new Mac Mini, along with a redesign as rumored since last year. And this redesign is expected to be a pretty big one. So according to several sources, we can expect to see a thinner body, a top that's finished with plexiglass, a magnetic power port like we see on the latest iMac, 
and a bigger port selection. So we don't know exactly which ports are gonna be added, but hopefully we do see an SD card slot like we got with the latest MacBook Pros. Now keep in mind that German's report does not specifically mention the Mac Mini. It just says, quote, the company is also planning a new Mac with Apple design chips, which could also come as early as March. So while this is the most likely scenario, it is not a guarantee like the iPhone SE and the iPad Air are. Also, it does say as early as March 8th, which means that the current date is set for March 8th, but it could get delayed by a week or so due to production issues or just the decision to push it back to mess with us just to show us that nothing is final until Apple says it themselves, which they've done before. In addition to the products, I would also expect Apple to spend some time talking about the upcoming iOS 15.4 update since it is a major one. So we're currently in the beta stages and we've seen the new mask ID feature, which allows you to unlock your phone with face ID even when a mask is covering your mouth and your nose. You also get the option to add glasses. So if we go into here, you can see you have the option to add glasses as well. So I do think Apple's gonna spend some time talking about this at the event because it is a major feature along with other major features included in iOS 15.4. So I can definitely see them talking about that. We may even see it released at the end of the event or Apple might just announce when 15.4 is going to be released. And keep in mind, I will be live streaming this event with you guys here on YouTube. So make sure you tune in next month. It's always a great time. I always stream every Apple event and give you guys real time reactions. So that'll be fun. Make sure you are subscribed and tune in to that live stream. And then German ends this report by giving us a look further ahead into the year at Apple's roadmap. Map, he says, quote, the 2022 lineup is likely to include new iMac and Mac Pro desktops, a redesigned MacBook Air, an updated low-end MacBook Pro, three Apple Watches, four iPhone 14 models, and new AirPods. The company is also planning new services, such as a feature that lets the iPhone accept payments with the tap of a credit card. So no more square reader or anything like that will be needed. Apple is also working on a high-end mixed reality headset as well, but that's now more likely to be released in 2023. The company had aimed to announce the device as early as the end of 2022, but development challenges have delayed the timing. So again, we're set up for a record-breaking year in terms of Apple product launches. We're gonna see the most Apple products released in one year than ever before if all goes as planned. But of course, a lot of things can happen between now and the end of the year. But super excited. I'm super excited for everything coming in 2022. A lot to look forward to, and it all starts next month. Now, keep in mind that nothing has been confirmed just yet. I think the biggest thing that's up in the air right now is the date of the event. I think we are for sure getting the iPhone SE and the iPad Air, and probably like a 60% chance of the new Mac Mini. But the date is one thing that it's like 50-50 right now. We don't know for sure if it's going to be on March 8th or later. But of course, Apple always sends out invites and lets everybody know about the event a week in advance. So if we are going to see a March 8th event, that means that we should see invitations go out on Tuesday, March 1st. So that'll be exciting to see. And that's only a few weeks away. We're pretty close to that coming. And that's going to be the start of a very busy 2022 when it comes to Apple products. But let me know what you guys want to see down in the comments below. What are you excited for? What are you disappointed is not coming? Let me know all your thoughts down there in those comments below. And if you guys enjoyed this video, like always, I would appreciate if you give it a thumbs up. And of course, make sure to subscribe for a lot more coverage and also the live stream because I will be streaming this event live here on the channel. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.